Yeah, back in those days, back in the, say, early 90s, mid-90s, probably 94, 95, when we had dial-up, you had, you know, 14.4 modems or slower, all the way up through 20 to 56K, and then all the flavors of DSL. Um, core bandwidth needs from an ISP's perspective have gone up dramatically. We ran the statistics this week, and, and from 2004 to 2014, that number's gone up um, over 11,000%. For, that's, that's calculating the traffic our users are using in total on our network. Um, and the funny thing is, is it's exponentially getting faster in the last few years as broadband speeds have gone from traditionally say one meg, now people are needing 10, 20, 50, up to a gig. So um, that number is going to continue to just ramp up very rapidly. Um, primarily it's video. Um, Netflix is the big driver for a lot of this. Um, people are having a Netflix player on their smart TVs or watching it on their mobile phones because mobiles mobile is now going to is now the the first option for most people as far as internet service is concerned and as far as entertainment is concerned um, so the video is the key um, traditional web surfing things like that bandwidth needs are getting higher all the time but it comes down to that entertainment and the media need is what's driving it. Um, you know, you've got obviously you've got your traditional computers, laptops, desktops, that kind of thing. And we talked about mobile a little bit. Um, everybody can look at their usage and kind of figure out what they do with each device. But the, the big ones that are driving that are things like uh, set top boxes, over the top players, Roku sticks, Amazon Fire sticks, those kinds of things where you're, you're playing Netflix. Uh, but the things people don't think about are it traditionally are things like gaming consoles, Xbox Ones or you know PS4s, PlayStation 4s, things like that. Um, they're not just a gaming console anymore. They're, they're an entertainment hub, so they are also a streaming media source and, and driving a lot of bandwidth. And traditionally, a lot of people don't think about that because their kids are the ones using them, so they don't necessarily see that usage themselves. They will see it when their internet service speed feels pain, and they don't know why. Um, a lot of times it's because the kids are using up the bandwidth doing things um, that they don't see on the network. So that's why bandwidth is so important as a, a whole for the home, not just each user. Uh, it all comes down to you, about your, your habits and your usage, obviously. If you are a regular user just doing things like Facebook and web surfing, that kind of thing, then something in the, the, the six meg range is, is probably adequate. If you're going to do Netflix, if you're going to do, or, or YouTube, or any of the big streaming, video streaming services, you're going to need something bigger. Uh, and that need is growing even more and quicker with HD now. Um, and then they're going to have Ultra HD or 4K, call it what you will, the different technologies. But the quality of the video is getting much better. And as that quality gets better, the need for bandwidth is there. So if you want to watch an ultra or a 4K or an ultra HD stream of some sporting event and you don't have 15, 20, 30, 50 meg, depending on the situation, um, you're not going to get it. It'll automatically adapt that bandwidth down to whatever it is you have. So instead of getting a nice HD signal, you're going to get something that's grainy or buffers or the quality suffers that way. So um, and with what you're seeing with things like um, GoPros and other action cameras, they're all going to start recording natively in things like 4K. So you're going to need a big internet connection to, to take part in that entertainment for sure. Things like Dropbox, Google Drive, um, Microsoft SkyDrive, whatever, there's lots of options. Amazon has their own option as well. So generically speaking though, the way I think about it is it's a hard drive in the sky. Um, because when you take a lot of video or a lot of pictures, you don't necessarily want to just keep that on your local hard drive. And a lot of times now with flash storage on new computers, you don't have that much storage. Um, so you need to offload that. And that means in order to get them to the cloud, you need a big upload, which our fiber network is perfect for that. Uh, we don't have any limitation at all. If you, you can get one gig down by one gig up if you want it. Um, so to get that up in the cloud, that's great. It's nice and fast, it's consistent, you know it's going to be there. The other side to think about though is, is after it's in the cloud, you want to show it on your TV or show it on a device or show it on your phone to friends and you don't want to have to have those, all those files on that device. Well then you need that big download to show them from the cloud. I, I, would, I would definitely say you want to be in the 10 plus meg area if you're doing a lot of that. Um, 
Again, it completely depends upon your usage and your patience level too. Uh, but overall, you want a big upload to make sure that you don't sit there and wait and wait and wait and wait, especially from a mobile device. Um, nothing can be more frustrating than having to wait for something to happen before you can move on to the next event or the next thing that you're doing for sure. I, I know from experience, because I have 21-year-old kids um, still in my house right now, and they have, we've got the whole gaming, multiple gaming systems, every gadget you could possibly imagine, and I can tell you that their usage does affect what's going on in the home, not only from um, a quality of Wi-Fi signal to the router to the, to the upload to the download, it's the whole thing. So you got to think about that when you're, when you're sizing everything. It's not just the bandwidth, it's everything involved. But I would say in that kind of situation where you have multiple gaming consoles and a lot of video, because kids these days, what, what I see is kids don't watch television like, like I did when I was a kid. They watch over the top. They watch YouTube, they watch Twitch, they watch Netflix, they watch those over the top services. So that means your internet bandwidth is really important. So if you have multiple kids watching multiple streams of high definition Netflix or Twitch or whatever it is, then you can just say, okay, that there's five meg there, there's five meg there, there's five meg there, and then you take your own usage into play. So I mean, you're easily talking a 20 meg internet connection just to make sure you don't have buffering, just to make sure that the quality doesn't suffer. So um, more is always better, obviously. But I, I would say with in today's world, if you can get into that 20 to, depending on the tiers, 20 to 50 meg range, it's probably going to get you through almost anything you can imagine today, but that number is changing very rapidly, very rapidly. And I think that a lot of people think that just because I have fiber to my house, I have this big pipe. Well, fiber is just the physical medium that doesn't, just because it's capable of doing gig or multiple gigs, well, that doesn't mean that's what your plan is. So you need to look at what your actual uh, plan is versus your usage and figure out what makes sense for you. So. Um, and a lot of times, a lot of people take the, the lowest or the, the cheapest rate, um, and it, works, it worked for them for years. But again, with high definition video and things like that, um, those days are, it's completely different today. And again, it's, it's exponentially getting more important. You know, in years past, we used to offer 256K as, as the low, or we had, even we offered 128K back in the old days of broadband. Um, you know, now you can't even get anything under, say, six meg. So that's that's really where it's it's funny. In you know, 15 years or so, it's gone from 128k as the minimum to six meg. And I would venture to say, in the next in the next 15 years, probably 100 meg or maybe even gig will be the the norm um, for the base tier for any internet service. It, it is getting to the point where. Um, it is a need. It's not. It's not a want anymore. There's so many things people need the internet for, and they expect it to be very good quality, always there, um, no glitches. And you know, the old days of dial-up, people were like, you know, you, you got used to having poor service. You know, busy modems or, you know, glitchy service. Those days are rapidly going away because everything is going over the top. Whether it's video or commerce, it doesn't matter. Everything is going over the internet, and it's it's going to continue that way in the future. Yeah, you know, you know the, the general um, term is Internet of Things, which everybody's hearing about, the Internet of Things. And, and generically speaking, it's the idea is everything in your home or your business is going to have a sensor on it or multiple sensors on them. So what that means is not only is it gathering data locally in your home, it's also probably sending that data out to the cloud somewhere to have it analyzed and use that data in some way. So. Uh, if you now have a smart home and you, you use it as, say, a security system, well, that means your internet connection has to be reliable. It has to be always there. You can't have a glitch there. Um, people are used to, with traditional phone service for their security systems to be, say, five nines of reliability. It always works, power outages, things like that. Well, that's where the internet's going now, too. Um, so, and again, going back to the fiber network that we have, um, we, we have a very robust, very scalable network for those kinds of things. But the smart home itself um, may not be bandwidth intensive today. It's getting there because you're you're not only doing things like door sensors, uh, you know, to know whether or not your door is open, or Nest thermostats to set your temperature. All that stuff doesn't take much bandwidth, but what does is home security cameras in your in your house. So things like drop cams or 
um, any, any manufacturer really being able to peer into your house at any given time and, and watch live video of what's going on in your home or take action upon that too. Um, based on motion or whatever the sensors may be in the camera, you can do different things in your house. That does take bandwidth and it takes uh, reliable bandwidth. I would say take inventory first of what devices you and your family have and, and think about everything. Again, going to the consoles, to the traditional computers, laptops, smart devices in your house to even smart TVs. Every TV you buy today, realistically, is probably gonna be a smart TV, whether it's connected via Wi-Fi or physical ethernet. Um, kind of get that number, kind of get, get that list of things in your head and then really think how you use them, how you use each of the devices, um, whether it's you or your children, and just kind of do the math yourself. Understand, you know, there could be four of us in the house at any given time, three of us could be watching streaming video. Well, now, you know, take that times five meg per user on the streaming video side. On the gaming side, maybe a three meg connection is good for, for a good quality gaming connection. Um, and then just do the math and, and, you know, if you want a good quality connection, don't be chintzy. Go a little bit above that just to make sure you're not going to get buffering or, or poor, poor service. So um, that's, I mean, that's the way I would do it for sure is just take it a very simplistic approach and do the math. Um, now from our, you know, I will do a little bit of a sales pitch from our network perspective. Um, the things that we do better than any of our competitors is the, again, the fiber network gives us a lot of advantage because there's really no better technology to do internet service than fiber. It also allows us to have unlimited upload capabilities where a lot of other technologies, you don't have that option. It's, it's an either or. So you get a lot download, but you don't get that much up. We can do both at the same time. Um, and then the, from a quality metric, the latency on our network is dramatically lower. We, you know, we've done the calculations and it's up to 90% more efficient for a packet to get from point A to point Z on our network than it is our competitors' networks. So um, overall, our network is the, the best in our region for sure. Um, and our overall internet availability is, uh, is second to none. That and it could be internal issues in the home. You could have a very old wireless router that you're using, or um, there could be a lot of wireless interference in your neighborhood. There, there's a lot of things that play into it um, that people need to understand and, and take, that in, take, take stock of that to know, okay, I need to look at this. It might not be my ISP, whether it's us or whether it's one of our competitors. It, it may not be the network. It may be something local in the home. Um, but that's something that we can help you troubleshoot and help you figure out to make sure that you have this really, you have a Cadillac connection coming to your house, but you have a Pinto, you know, router or network in your home, you need to upgrade that if you want to really take advantage of today's technologies and, and um, enjoy the entertainment value that, that the internet brings. Well, the way, I, the way I like to think about it is, you know, I'm, we are old enough to know what um, VHS was, VHS tapes, and then, you know, then DVDs came. And the jump from VHS to DVD was pretty dramatic. It was pretty obvious. And I was one of those skeptical people that said the jump from DVD to Blu-ray. Oh, come on, it can't, it can't really get much better. But then you go see a Blu-ray and you're going, oh my God, it's, you, you can tell. Even somebody who isn't a, a video file can tell there's a dramatic difference. Well, then when you see Blu-ray to 4K or 8K, if you've never been able to see 4K or 8K, you'll see a difference. So I, I, get, I let go of all the skepticism years ago when, when I thought, oh, it can never get any better. I'm pretty confident it's going to just continue to get better and better and better. And until you see it, until you experience it, you just don't realize it.